Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining in for the press conference with Taylor Fritz, who advances to his first career ATP Masters 1000 quarterfinal and his first quarterfinal here in Indian Wells. Well, we'll open it up for questions. Chris Otto, do you want to start it? Thanks, Greg. Gladly. Hey, Taylor, congrats on a massive win. Thank you. Um, just briefly, there are... What does it mean just to be able to perform that way, go on a run like this in California at the end of a long trying season? Yeah, it, it's huge for me. It's it's big, especially to you know have a have a good win against a really good player yesterday, and then kind of come back and play even even better today against another really good player, and you know just play my game, play it well, and uh, play confidently, and just close close that one out. It, it feels great to do it. You know, also it's such a uh, such a special tournament to me as well. Were you extra comfortable out there because you had some experience, like you mentioned, practicing with Yannick? I think I think I definitely knew what to expect. I've only practiced with Yannick twice, I think, but both times have been like, I feel like I left the court and I was like, wow, that was such a high level practice. I just feel like the way that he hits the ball feels really good for how I hit the ball. I like uh, the pace and the the spin. I, I don't know how to really describe it, but I feel like both of us hit the ball well off of each other's uh, balls. So I, I felt like definitely knew that um, or expected uh, to play uh, well today. And lastly, could you comment? You spoke a couple times this season about how you see yourself in the years like 26 to 30 years old, hitting your prime and hitting your peak. Can you give us a little bit of a, a look up here into what that Taylor Fritz is like compared to what you're playing like now? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I think I only said that yesterday. I'm not sure, but. Um, I thought I did say it once before, actually. Uh, okay, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure, but um, I think the, you know, the finished, the finished version of, you know, my game, I'm going to be playing a lot like I was today, serving. You know, I'd like to still improve my serve even more, serve, and then have my forehand be even more uh, reliable than it is now. More of a weapon, um, you know, less errors on it. I've uh, been working a lot on coming forward to net. I'd love to be able to finish more points at net, feel more comfortable with it because I hurt um, I hurt people with my power and kind of back them up. I think uh, coming to net can add another layer to my game and then um, just improving the return and becoming... Uh, stronger and faster which i've been able to do um over the past couple of years and i think there's still a lot of a lot of room for improvement you know everyone kind of peaks at different times but i'm 23 right now and i know i just i just know that i'm nowhere near where you know where i think i'm going to be as a player thank you taylor hey let's go to chad powers from the desert sun go ahead chad uh, hey, hey, Taylor. Yeah, um, just wondering if you sort of saw a deep run like this coming, uh, heading into this tournament. Uh, how did you feel like you were playing and how, you know, physically fit, that kind of stuff? How were you feeling coming into the tournament? Um, I'd say pretty good. You know, I felt I felt pretty good. Um, the last couple months, every tournament I've, I've kind of come into, I've just lost some, lost some close ones, maybe, you know, not performed my best in some really uh, tight situations. So, you know, it's nice to kind of kind of put it together this week. I feel like the level, like the tennis level and the fitness level um, in practice and off the court's been or off the like out of the actual match matches has been uh, has been there. So it's kind of just nice to put it together. Any follow up, Chad? Uh, I'm sorry. No, thank you. I uh, appreciate that. Mm -hmm. OK, let's go over to Karen. Karen, go ahead, please. Hi, Taylor. Well done tonight or today. Um, I hope you won't take this as an insult because it's not intended to be, but I don't think I've seen you show this type of emotion in quite a while. In fact, I'm thinking the last time I saw it was in Geneva at Labor Cup. So how big was this today for you emotionally? Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely, I feed off of the energy. So there's a lot of emotion in Labor Cup because you're playing for the team and I have the whole team pump me up. And then also this is a home uh, a home tournament for me, basically. So it, it means a lot. And also my first Masters 1000 quarterfinal. And probably on top of that, 
the emotion. I'm, most of the time, I'm probably not happy with how I'm playing, so it's tough for me to get like really pumped up. Mm-hmm. But sure. um, I'm very, like, I'm very, very, uh, very hard on myself, and that's something I think we've been trying to work on. But um, I'm super happy with how I'm playing. You know, uh, played well the last two days against two uh, really, really good opponents, uh, really good players. So. You know, I think that's where that's coming from is the crowd and then also me just being very, uh, you know, happy, happy with my game. Yeah, we've got a lot to be happy about. So a follow up question, changing subjects, you know, Riley's put out some interesting posts around media coverage of tennis. And, you know, I think it's great that you guys should have a voice and and to say the kind of things that need to be said. So is there something that you would like to see change in the way pressers are done? um that that might just be maybe more entertaining for fans and you know more interesting for everyone involved you know i think i think the thing is media is just media is just tough because it, it's at times tough to have a bit of a personality because there's always going to be people uh criticizing or you know it's very tough to to make everyone happy if you say something polarizing you know you're going to rub people the wrong way so you know it'd be really nice for people to kind of just be able to uh, be themselves, kind of say things how they are and, you know, not have to worry about the, I guess, the the implications of it. But um, I've always tried to keep it pretty, pretty real in my in my press conferences. And, you know, and that's that's one thing I love about Riley is he he also kind of just tries to say things how they are. And he doesn't really care about, you know, what people are going to say because he, he knows he's just kind of speaking the truth. Mm-hmm. He's from the school of Andy Murray. Uh, yeah. And, you know, uh, and my hope being on this side of the fence is that we get a chance to talk a little bit more about this with you guys and just figure out a way to move it forward in a, in a positive direction. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's just, round. it's just no one, you know, players get a lot of criticism, but no one really like, no one really knows the players other than like the people that see them behind closed doors. You know, it's very tough to judge players mm-hmm. off of what they say in press. Cause a lot of things people say in press is not, it's, it's, it's not, it's not them. So <laughs> Yeah, uh, there's there's the image and then there's the person. Exactly. So yeah. I, I think I think just, you know, keeping it real is is something that uh, can let, you know, player personality shine through. But it's it, it's tough because it's it can be so polarizing. But um, yeah, that's that, that's kind of how how I've always tried to do it. Maybe we can find some ways to take some of the risks out of that for you guys. <laughs> mm. But yeah, it's up All to right, the good luck going forward. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, any other last follow-up before we let Taylor go? Yeah, if I may, um, Taylor, can you run down for me um, how this week is different and maybe also in San Diego? Do you have extra family and friends around kind of giving you a little bit of extra energy during these couple of weeks? Uh, I mean, it's definitely it's definitely nice having, uh, you know, a, a support team kind of around me other other than my you know my base my base group um you know my parents here um brother uh friends come out so i think it's definitely like it maybe pumps me up a little bit more but more than anything it's the it's the home crowd and this just being such a special event for me same with san diego you know unfortunate i kind of let i kind of let uh let it slip away from me in san diego if anyone caught the caught the match but uh uh, yeah, it's just it's just nice to uh, it's really really nice to be here. You're making up for that here. Trying my best. <laughs> thanks, Taylor. Good luck. Thanks. Okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Taylor. Thank you.